Hey YouTube, it's Lisa and I thought today would be a very appropriate day to, um, to make a video about egg quality because I am, I started my period on the 3rd um, and so that's my, this is my first period after my DNC. It actually turned out to be, um, I was told that it could be six to eight weeks before I got another period, so I was kind of surprised because I got my period and it was like almost 29 days. And I usually had a 29 to 30 day sort, um, cycle. I guess it kind of depends on when you count because sometimes I count 28, 29, or 30, just depending on like sometimes I would start in the middle of the night or sometimes I would start morning and then I'd count that as a full day. So I've always had a cycle that's pretty regular and um, just kind of, um, but I would say 29 would probably be, like if I averaged it out, it would be a 29 day cycle and this was exactly a 29 day cycle. So um, I just started my period and I have, the, this is going to be TMI, but this period has been really gross and I wasn't really expecting, I wasn't really expecting that. I thought it would be a normal period, but because they told me that we could start trying again as soon as I got my next period, but I decided to wait a cycle to try to improve my egg quality because it takes 90 to 120 days to improve for the eggs that are going to drop. Um, that, so what you're doing right now is affecting the eggs that will drop later so but anyway your eggs drop every 90 to 120 days now I've seen a couple different studies on this I've only seen one that says 120 most say 90 so I'm kind of going with 90 but I was taking care of myself after I got pregnant so I'm going to count that as some of the days that I was nurturing my my newly forming eggs or my newly blossoming eggs um, and, but since I had my miscarriage I've been trying really really hard but one thing I will say is this period has been, um, and this is going to sound weird, but it just, um, it's been pretty heavy, but I always had two days of heaviness, so that hasn't been super abnormal, but the weird thing is it smells different, like it literally smells like old blood, and I know, like be nauseous or whatever, because that sounds really gross, but um, yeah, I've almost been like embarrassed to like, I'm always like going, oh, do I smell, do I smell, because it smells awful and I don't know if I'm the only one that's happened to but yeah I just thought I'd throw it out there other than that the period seems pretty normal but I am actually going to start trying to conceive on my next cycle in December so that'll be close to my birthday so anyway but I also thought I would talk about um, since I do have my period and since I now realize I am only four to six weeks away from trying again we are totally using protection now because I don't want to I really wanted to have my eggs in tip-top shape. I just, I cannot keep having miscarriages, and I really, in my heart, believe this is part of the problem. So, um, yes, yeah, so I'll be trying in December, so I guess in January I will let you guys know if it worked. Um, anyway, so the first thing I'm doing is I am just continuing to take my prenatal vitamin, and I am taking a really good prenatal vitamin, which I always have when I've gotten pregnant, but now I'm taking a really good one, um, and it's just the raw one. It's, uh, anyway, I think it's really good. It doesn't have any artificial colors. It's got tons of organic ingredients. Um, and it just has a couple of little extra things like wheatgrass and stuff like that that are really good. Um, a friend of mine who is an RN also told me that you might consider taking additional iron with this. Um, I haven't really done any research on that, but I will, and I will let you know, and so she was telling me about baby aspirin and iron, and she had almost the exact same scenario that I had. She had, um, she had a miscarriage between her second and her third, which so did I, and then she had, and then she had four kids total, and then she started trying for another one, and she had three miscarriages in a row, just like I did, and now she has, on their fourth try, they had a baby, and they ended up, she said that um, she had all of her babies in her 20s and then she, this last one she had, she had in her 30s and her doctor was like, your body has changed, why don't you try taking baby aspirin and iron? And so she did and she had a beautiful, healthy baby boy and she was just here yesterday and he's beautiful. So, um, so I am going to look into that. I've read it's for a clotting disorder but I've also read it doesn't, uh, that it doesn't matter, like that it's, it's healthy to take anyway. So I haven't done my research on that yet, but I will, and I will let you know. But right now, I'm just taking my prenatals um, with, and that's got iron and folic acid and everything in that. And then this 
is kind of an interesting one because before I got pregnant, these are my Synthroid pills. I have a Synthroid, um, I have hypothyroid, which happened after I had my second son. Um, no, I take it back, it happened after my first son, but it, my dose changed after my second son. But um, yeah, my first son threw, kind of blew out my thyroid and I knew that when my hair started falling out and I couldn't lose the baby weight. And so um, so now the reason I'm showing you this, and I'm, you may or may not have a, a thyroid problem, but the reason that um, I'm showing you this is because before I started having my miscarriages, I wasn't really that good at remembering to take it. And anything that has to do with your endocrine system is really important to your fertility and so I was taking my thyroid pills like every other day, sometimes every day, sometimes I remember, sometimes I wouldn't and I was a slacker with it and I just wasn't really worried about it because unless I would start noticing my hair was falling out or I was getting those symptoms of hypothyroid again, I wasn't worried about it. So the other, I have been super diligent with taking my medications so that's the other thing. Um, one of the things I did that I kept that kept coming up when I was researching fertility is um, royal jelly. So I have a little thing that I was because I, I I started taking it. If this one is already mixed in honey. You can get it in pill form. For some reason, I feel like the one that is um, mixed with honey is just more pure. But that's just me. Um, but anyway, uh, I maybe would like the pill form, but I just don't kind of know what dose. This just seems more natural. Is the bottom line. Um, but it's not like it's not a pill or anything so I feel super safe taking it and let me just read to you because I what I, I everywhere I went I saw royal jelly for fertility royal jelly for fertility and I didn't um, I just kind of looked up why and basically it just bombards your eggs with nutrients and so let me just read this quick little snippet I have Royal jelly is rich in amino acids, 29 to be exact, lipids, sugars, and some vitamins, fatty acids, and most importantly, proteins. Um, it contains ample levels of iron and calcium. And we were talking about increasing your iron, and I think I would rather increase my iron in a natural way. I have been eating lots of leafy greens and stuff like that to also increase my iron. So, but I have been using, um, let's show it to you. It's uh, I read online people who've had success with this, and they um, and people have said that it's like 10.95. Um, I haven't been able to find it for 10.95. For me, it's 17.95. Maybe theirs is a different size. It's 11 ounces, um, and taking about a teaspoon a day. And I call me crazy, but I really feel like it's working. At least I'm feeling better. And I will say that my um, my girl system, my um, my period and everything has been super dead on since I've been taking really good care of myself. And then kind of the last thing I'm going to show you today that I'm doing, and all of these I feel like they're not like, they're not like, you know, dangerous or overdosing or whatever because they're natural and, um, you know, you could be getting the same things in foods. It's just that like... Like all of us, we don't have 24 hours a day to think about our diets, and I am trying really hard to lose the weight that I gained during my miscarriages. So um, I am thinking more about my diet than usual, but anyway, um, but I still am sure I have some holes, and some of these things help to fill the gaps because I'm really trying to really, really, really nourish my eggs. So the other thing I've been taking daily has been the, su the um, superfood the green superfood. And the reason I started taking this is because when I started doing, um, when I was doing research on everything, I was finding these really expensive pills that you could order and really expensive things you could order to put in your smoothie. And they were, and they had one of the things that then they were for fertility, specifically for fertility. And they had in them like spirulina and uh, wheatgrass and alfalfa and all these things that were supposed to be super nourishing to your eggs, improve your egg, egg quality, improve your fertility system, your reproductive system. And, but they were super expensive and I just was like, for hearsay, I mean, of course we're all desperate and we all really want to have a baby and, but I thought I really, because I already have other kids, I can't, I can't justify spending that kind of money on something that may or may not work. Then I found this and it is almost the exact same ingredients. So um, let me see. It has in it, I mean it has iron in it again, iodine, which is also something that I've been reading, it can increase, but I haven't wanted to 
like take a pill because I haven't known the dosage, so I feel really safe getting it. This is basically just ground up grasses and ground up um, seaweed and stuff in a form. It, there's only 30 calories in it. I really like that. In my in the afternoon, I mix it with a banana and have it for my smoothie. It is a disgusting color, and but now she, let me see if I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but. This one's almost gone. I'll show you the new flavor that I got, but it's like kind of a green color and that's exactly what it looks like even after you mix it with a banana. Um, but it has in it, um, let's see, organic wheatgrass, organic barley, grass, organic alfalfa, organic spirulina, organic spinach, organic chlorella, um, and organic broccoli, all of which have been linked to fertility. And then and improving your egg quality. And it also has in it, um, I'm gonna probably pronounce this, I've heard acai and I've heard acai, but I'm gonna go with acai. Organic acai, which is that berry, organic maca, organic carrot, organic beet, raspberry, organic rose hips, organic pineapple, green tea, and um, cherry. Anyway, it has fiber, it has all sorts of stuff and everything that's been linked to fertility. Now the only thing is, I am going to stop taking this as I get closer to trying to conceive, because right now I'm just using this to um, to boost my egg quality. But I'm gonna stop taking it, and here's why. It has maca in it. And I am actually, um, I think I'm gonna try Clomid. Um, my doctor gave me a prescription, and I thought, you know, I just wanna, I just really wanna go forward and just get this done. So, um, and I have heard that maca and Clomid work against each other. So I am going to just nourish my eggs with this uh, up until about two weeks before we start trying it, two weeks before I start taking the Clomid. And then I'm going to, so my, so the maca will help get my reproductive, reproductive system back on track. And then, um, and then I'm going to start taking my Clomid. But the other, so this is the orange dreamsicle flavor. It's okay. I don't love it. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I got a new one. This is called chocolate peppermint. I'm hoping that if I drink it warm, it'll be like coffee or hot chocolate or something. I will let you know. You can still, I still have this seal on it. I'm also hoping my, my kids eat, take this too. And I'm also really hoping that they will like it. So I still have probably 50 more things to tell you that I'm, what I'm doing. So um, I'll try not to ramble so much next time. This time it's been a little difficult. Well, as usual, because... My little guys are running around the house. We just got home from piano lessons, and we are going to go play soon. We haven't decided it's snowing out in here in Colorado, even though it was 80 degrees yesterday, um, which is one of the things I love about Colorado. But we are we have to go somewhere indoors today, so we're either going to go to play at the playground or focus on the family or play at McDonald's or something like that. But uh, anyway, it's fun to have options. Anyway, YouTube, um, I hope I didn't ramble too much. I hope this helps somebody, and I would be totally open to some of the things you guys are doing. Anyway, have a great day.